to video number 5A, where we will look at several examples of the four basic techniques for finding singles. These are all pretty simple, but there's more to it than you might think. The great thing about singles is that whenever you find one, you immediately get to place a digit in a cell. Okay, let's go over to the puzzle board. As we know, there are basically four techniques for finding singles. Naked singles, hidden singles, a full house, and by crosshatching. So first, let's take a look at some examples of crosshatching that we learned how to do in video 5. And as I mentioned, if you are doing the puzzles in pencil and paper, crosshatching should be the very first thing you do. Okay, in this first example, we see that we have a 3 here in row 4, a 3 in column 4, and we have a 3 in row 6. So let's block off the squares where there cannot be a 3 based on the positions of those in regard to block 5. We're not going to color everything in, we only the ones we need. So these three threes block those five colored squares, and so the only place left to put a 3 is right there. And so you fill it in. All right, next, let's take a look at these 8s. We have an 8 in row 8, an 8 in row 7, an 8 in column 7, and an 8 in column 9. And as before, let's block off the squares in block 9 that these 8s prevent another 8 from occurring. So that's in column 7 column 9, and that one's already filled in from row 7, and then in row 8 we have that one. So we see that the only place left to put an 8 in block 9 is right there, and you fill it in. Now this is an important configuration. Notice that those four yellow 8s are in two of the rows and two of the columns that intersect with block 9. When this happens, you know that there can only be one cell left for the 8 in block 9. And you don't even need this 5, 2, and the 1, these digits that are already placed, it looks like they block those cells. You don't even need them. And let me show you. If you see this, if you see a configuration like this, you know that this 8 in row 7 is going to block these three cells, and the 8 in row 8 is going to block these three cells. The 8 in column 7 is going to block that, and the 8 in column 9 is going to block that. So you didn't need the 5, 2, and the 1. This cell is an 8 regardless. All you need is an 8 in two of the rows and two of the columns intersecting with a block. And this doesn't have to be a corner block. It can be any block. If you have two rows and two columns containing the same digit going through a block, there will be only one cell left for that digit to go. Like, for instance, here with these twos, you see that down here in block eight, this can't be a two, these can't be a two, that cannot be a two, and that cannot be a two. So just by virtue of having the same digit in two columns and two rows, leaves only one cell for that two in block eight. And further, if you notice that you have eight of the nine instances of a particular digit filled in, and there's only one block left for that digit to go, you know you at least have this situation of two rows and two columns going through that block. Like, let me show you what I mean. If that is a two, and that is a two, and that is a two, and that is a two, that would be eight of the nine twos, and let's say this one we don't know yet. Okay, well, if you've got all eight, then you at least have the two columns and the two rows going through that last block, and so you don't even need these other four twos. But if you have all eight, you know that you at least have this position, and you can fill that in. And if you turn on your filters, that cell will show itself as a hidden or a naked single, because that's the only place for that last two to go. And here's another tip. If you are using one of those computer programs that does not have candidate filters, 
but instead tells you how many instances of each digit are left in the puzzle. When it tells you that there is only one remaining instance of a particular digit, then you know you can use cross-hatching to find it, and it will be a hidden or a naked single. So you can immediately solve that cell for that digit. Because if there is only one instance of that candidate left, then that would mean eight of the blocks already have that digit filled in, and this would further guarantee that two rows and two columns containing that digit are intersecting with the block where that last instance of the candidate lies. And all you have to do is find that candidate and it will be the solution to that cell. So here we have a six in row four and a six in row six. So that prevents a six from being here and it prevents a six from being here or here. So because of the presence of these other digits that are already placed in block four, we know that this last remaining cell here has to be a six. In this puzzle, let's take a look at the ones. We have a one in column five, we have a one in row eight, and a one in row nine. So now we wanna look at block eight and we see that because of this one up here, that cannot be a one, and because of this one, that cannot be a one, and because of this one here in row eight, that cannot be a one, which leaves only one place to put a one, and that is right there. Okay, in this puzzle, let's take a look at the twos. We see we have a two, in row two, a two in row three, and a two in column three. And now let's take a look at block number one. And we see that this two in row two blocks this square, as does this two in column three. But the two in column three also blocks those squares. And the two in row three blocks those two squares, or cells rather, which leaves only one place for a two to go up there, and that is right there. Now here, let's take a look at these nines and see how they affect block nine. So we have one here, one here, one here, one here. And once again, we see we have two rows and two columns with a digit nine going through block nine, which does not yet have a nine. So we see that a nine cannot occur here, here, or here because of the nine in row seven and a nine cannot occur here, here, or here because of the nine in row nine. And there cannot be a nine here because of this nine in column eight, and there cannot be a nine here because of this nine in column nine. So we can safely enter digit nine into block nine. But the interesting thing to notice here is that before we did this, there was not a single digit placed in block nine. Every cell was empty. Yet by virtue of cross-hatching, and because we had two rows and two columns going through the same block, we were able to solve the nine in block nine. Okay, here is a typical puzzle that you might find in the newspaper. So let's use cross-hatching and see what we can do. Let's go through the digits one through nine. So starting with the ones, there are only three ones and they don't produce any solutions. And there are only two twos, they don't produce any solutions. But the threes look promising. There are five threes in the puzzle, so let's highlight them in yellow. Two, three, four, five. So immediately we can see that there cannot be a three here in column seven, and there cannot be another three here in column eight. So that leaves cell row six column nine must be a three. So let's fill that in, color it yellow. Now let's keep going. So let's look at rows one and two. We see that that cannot be a three and those three cells cannot be a three and because of the three in column five, that cannot be a three. So cell row three column six must be a three. So we'll fill that in. Now let's color that yellow and let's keep going. Now that we don't have any situation where there are two rows and two columns going through a block, even though we have 
we have seven threes in there. We still don't have that situation. So let's keep looking. And uh, let's see, uh, let's, let's look at columns one and two. And we see that there cannot be a three there and there cannot be a three there. And then because of this three in row six, there can't be a three there. So there must be a three in row four, column three. And now we have all eight. We have all eight threes and there's only one left. And so we know that there must be two columns and two rows going through that center block, block five. And so we know we're gonna solve that. So let's see where it is. So those cannot be a three, those cannot be a three, and that cannot be a three, and that cannot be a three. So the final three goes into row five, column four. And now all the threes are done. Does everybody see that? Okay, good. So now let's keep going. Let's uh, take the colors out. So now let's move to the fours. Okay, it looks like there are four fours and luckily they are in two columns and two rows going through block seven. So let's light them up here, 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 and here. So we know we're gonna solve block seven. Let's see where it goes. So this cannot be a four, those cannot be a four, and that cannot be a four. So the only remaining cell for a four is in row nine, column two. And so we fill it in there. All right, now let's move to the fives. Now there are only two fives, so there's nothing there, but uh, there are several sixes. So let's see what we have with the sixes. Let's light them up. One, two, three, four, five, we have six sixes. All right, what do we have here? Hmm, it looks like we're zeroing in on block nine. And so these cannot be a six, those cannot be a six, and that cannot be a six. So we can safely enter a six into row seven, column eight. Now let's light that up. And let's see. Now it looks like we go up to block three and those cannot be a six and that cannot be a six and that cannot be a six. So we can enter a six into row three, column seven. And let's see what else we have. Well, we've got, we've got two sixes and, and we've got two sixes and two columns and we've got two sixes and two rows going through block one. So we're certainly going to solve block one. So let's see what happens here. Those cannot be a six. That cannot be a six and that cannot be a six and that cannot be a six. So the last six in the puzzle goes into row two, column two. So now all the sixes are solved. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're all done. So now let's move on to the sevens and let's light them up. There are four sevens. So first, it looks like we can solve block one. So there can't be a seven here or here because of the one in column one. And there can't be a seven here because of the one in row Three, there can't be one here because of the one in row two. So that leaves a seven to go in row one, column three. All right, now let's light that up. And next, um, it looks like down here, there cannot be another seven in row seven. There cannot be another seven in column eight and there cannot be another seven in column nine. So that leaves a seven for row eight column eight. And now let's highlight that one. And okay, so now let's go here. Let's look in block four. That cannot be a seven. That cannot be a seven and that cannot be a seven. So a seven will go into row four, column two. And then it looks like a seven is gonna go right there. Okay, so here, so these two cells cannot be a seven because of the seven in row seven, and these three cells cannot be a seven because of the seven in row eight. 
So that leaves the only cell left is row 9, column 6, or a 7. And now, again, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We've got 8, 7, so we know we're going to solve this center block for a 7. So let's see where it is. Those cannot be a 7. That cannot be a 7. These two cannot be a 7. So the last 7 will go into row 6, column 5. So there, we've solved all the threes and all the sevens. And one thing to note is when you're using filters, if you're going through them over and over again, once you have solved all nine instances of a particular digit, don't waste your time clicking on that digit's filter again. I know I do that sometimes too. I'll be going through the filters in sequence and I'll get to the threes and I'll click on that and I'll go, oh geez, I already did those. So make a mental note and try not to click on a filter where you've already completed that digit. That will save you some time. So now let's take a look at the eights. Oh, there's only one, so there's nothing there. So now let's look at the nines. And even though there are only two of them, it looks like we can solve block seven. So let's light those nines up. And we see that that cannot be a nine because of the one in column two. And those cannot be a nine because of the one in column three which leaves only row 9, column 1, must be a 9. And you fill it in. Okay, so that's cross-hatching. And that's a very effective way to get a puzzle started, especially if you're doing it with pencil and paper. In a more advanced puzzle, you're not going to find many instances where cross-hatching is even available. But in the simpler puzzles, it does come up quite a lot. So use it when you can. All right, let's move on. Okay, here we have what's called a full house. And this is actually a good name for these because the house is full except for the last digit. And these are pretty simple, so we should be able to go through these fairly quickly. Here in block one, we see that all the digits are there except for a six. So we know that this last cell in block one must be a six. All right, next we see in column five, all the digits are there except for the eight. So that has to be an eight. Everybody see that? All right, in the next example, we see that in row one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. So we know this has to be a seven. Pretty simple. All right, next, we have row two. Here in row two, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's missing eight. So that has to be an eight. And next we have, in row eight, we have one, two, three, four, five, seven is missing. Okay, so you put the seven in there. And here we see in block five that all the digits are there except for the three. So row six, Column six must be a three. So you put it in. And the last example here, in column eight, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We know this must be a nine. And that's as simple as that. Those are fairly easy. You should be able to see these with your bare eyes with no filters necessary. But if you are using filters, they will show up as a naked single. So now let's move on to the hidden singles.